excretion in plants. Excretion is the process by which living organisms get rid of waste after taking the required nutrients from the food they consume. Excretion occurs in plants and animals as they both have waste products to be removed from their bodies. Plants have no special organs for removal of waste but they have their own system to remove waste from their bodies. Plants eliminate some waste through diffusion. During the day, excess oxygen gas produced by photosynthesis is released through stomata. Carbon dioxide produced by respiration is normally used up during photosynthesis. So, you may say that the waste product of respiration is used as raw material for photosynthesis. Oxygen gas produced as a byproduct of photosynthesis is used up during respiration. At night, as photosynthesis slows down, carbon dioxide is not used up as there is no photosynthesis during dark hours. In daytime, rate of carbon dioxide consumption for photosynthesis is much higher than the release by the plant. So the plant has to depend upon the carbon dioxide released by the other living organisms like carbon dioxide released by animals during respiration. Plants get rid of the waste products in the following ways. Gaseous waste products like carbon dioxide from respiration and oxygen from photosynthesis and water vapors are excreted from tiny pores stomata. This kind of elimination usually takes place through diffusion, a physiological process through which molecules move from their higher concentration to lower. During photosynthesis, gaseous carbon dioxide enters the plant cell by diffusion and once the photosynthetic products are formed, glucose is stored in the leaf and oxygen is released out through diffusion. The oxygen released during photosynthesis is an excretory product for the plant but it is a life support gas for all the living organisms. All living organisms including plants use oxygen gas for the respiration process. During respiration whether it happens in plants or animals carbon dioxide is released as an excretory product. In plants, inflow and outflow of gases takes place through diffusion. When concentration of any of these gases is more inside the plant cells, they are excreted in the atmosphere. As during diffusion, molecules move from the region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. This way, the gases excreted are diffused through the stomata present on leaf so that they can be removed from the plant. Plants also eliminate waste by shedding the leaves. With time, there is an accumulation of waste in the vacuoles of the aging leaf cells. These leaves eventually die and fall off. With this, the metabolic waste accumulated in the vacuoles get removed from the plant. In some areas during autumn, the color of the leaves changes to some different color 
which is usually a bright shade. This happens due to the storage of some waste pigment in the leaves. Soon these leaves fall off and the plants get rid of certain metabolic waste from its body. Other excretory products of plants Have you ever noticed sticky, milky substances coming out of leaves or stem or bark of a tree? These are excretory products and most of them are useful to human beings. In old trees, some waste products get collected in the bark of trees. When the bark is shed, the wastes are eliminated. Quinine is obtained from the bark of Cinchona tree. Quinine is the name of a medicine which is used to treat malaria. It is a type of alkaloid which is often bitter in taste. Latex Ficus elastica which is commonly known as rubber plant. It secretes a milky sticky sap known as latex. Latex is collected by making cuts into the bark with a special knife and allowing the latex to flow into a cup. After about 3 to 4 hours, the sap is manually collected and some chemicals are added to harden it. Process form of the product is used to make toys, glass and tires. The seed pods of Papaver somniferum, commonly known as poppy plant, secrete pale yellow latex when cut open. Dried latex from the poppy is used as a drug by the name opium. Opium is a highly addictive drug that causes several bad effects on the brain. Smoking opium causes irreparable damage to the heart, liver, kidneys and lungs. Morphine is a type of drug which is extracted by heating opium. Morphine has several medicinal uses also. It is the most effective pain relieving medicine and is used in severe pain caused due to some injury or surgical procedure. Some more excretory products of plants. Tannin. In certain plants, the parts including bark, fruit, leaves, roots etc. secrete some color imparting chemicals. Usually these are polyphenolic in nature and are used as dyes and inks. In oak tree, a type of tannin is stored in the bark and woody part of the trunk. Due to this, the wood appears dark. It yields yellow-brown color which is used for dyeing fabric. Katha, which is used to give red color and typical flavor to palm, is extracted from the heartwood of Acacia Kitachu plant. Gum Raisin Many plants produce gums raisins which are used to make a wide range of products. Gum raisin, a natural mixture of gum and raisin that is obtained from the roots, leaves and barks of certain plants. Esfotida raisin is produced by solidifying juice that comes out of cuts made in the plant's living roots. Some more excretory products of plants oil. They are aromatic volatile oils secreted by special plants present in the flowers and some other parts of plants. From the leaves of eucalyptus tree, oil is obtained from dry leaves after giving them some laboratory treatment. The oil thus obtained is used as an antiseptic, deodorant and as decongestants. Rosemary oil is extracted 
from the fresh flower tops of the plant. Rosemary oil smells very good and it is good for stimulating the brain, boosting the liver and gallbladder functioning. It is also used for improving hair and scalp health. Tobacco, a common name of the plant, Nicotiana tabacum. Various parts of this plant carry a drug known as nicotine. Stems and leaves are harvested separately and the different parts of the plant are consumed in different styles. Tobacco wrapped in a tendu leaf is used as beedi. Chewing tobacco is the oldest way of consuming tobacco leaves. It is consumed orally. Nicotine is highly addictive substance and its smoke contains several dangerous chemicals. Many of these chemicals are formed during the burning process of tobacco and inhaled when someone indulges in smoking. Mendel's Law of Heredity Johann Gregor Mendel was born to Anton and Rosine Mendel on July 22, 1822 in the Czech Republic. He was born into a family of Moravian peasants and proved to be very talented. During his childhood, Mendel worked as a gardener and studied beekeeping. Mendel demonstrated that the inheritance of certain traits in pea plants follows particular patterns, now referred to as the laws of heredity. Gregor Mendel is also known as the father of modern genetics. Gregor Mendel discovered the fundamental laws of inheritance while working on pea plants. He selected common garden pea plant, Pisum sativum, for the focus of his research because it can be grown easily in large numbers in very less time. Pea plants have both male and female reproductive organs. As a result, they can either self pollinate themselves or cross pollinate with another plant. Apart from these, pea plants have strikingly distinct, easily detectable, contrasting features such as seed color, flower color and height of plant. These are the reasons that Mendel chose the pea plant to conduct his experiments. He recognized the mathematical patterns of inheritance from one generation to the next. These experiments took him eight years. During the experiments, Mendel grew over 10,000 pea plants, keeping track of progeny number and type. Mendel's work and his laws of inheritance were not appreciated in his lifetime. It was quite late in 1900. Results of his experiment were understood. Gregor Mendel studied seven traits when doing his pea plant experiments. Length of stem, tall or dwarf, color of unripe pods, green or yellow, shape of ripe pods, inflated or constricted, shape of ripe seed, smooth or wrinkled. Color of seed, yellow or green. Color of flower, purple or white. Position of flowers, axial or terminal. He used several versions of these pea plants to discover the laws of heredity. Mendel's experiments. Mendel's experiments involved crossing 
and testing a large quantity of selected plants. His aim of doing these experiments was to examine how the plant's characteristics were passed on from one generation to the next. For eight years, Mendel cultivated thousands of pea plants. Mendel conducted breeding experiment in three steps. Selection of pure parent plant. Production of first generation of plants by crossbreeding. Raising of second and subsequent generation by self-fertilization. In his experiments, Mendel was able to selectively cross-pollinate pure breeds having particular trait over many generations. In Mendel's experiments, when only one trait at a time was considered, the data was represented in monohybrid cross. The experiment dealing with a single character is called monohybrid cross. For crosses, considering only one trait to be analyzed, Mendel first selected pure line plants, means the plants that produced similar traits generation after generation. Pure line plants for height were selected. Tall plant on one side and dwarf plant on the other side. He then cross pollinated such plants having the contrasting traits, considering one trait at a time, that is, height of the plants. These cross bred plants were either tall or short exclusively. In this experiment, the pollen grains from the flowers of a desired plant raised from the seeds of tall plant were transferred over the previously emasculated flower of a plant raised from the seed of a dwarf plant. After the transfer of pollen grains, the cross-pollinated flower was properly covered and seeds produced were allowed to germinate. Height of all the plants of F1 generation was carefully observed. Mendel found that all the plants of F1 generation were tall and there was no intermediate height. In this experiment, tallness completely masks dwarfness trait when true breeding plants are crossed. This shows tallness is dominant trait and dwarfness is recessive. Mendel then crossed the plants of F1 generation with each other. Means, flowers of these F1 generation plants were self-pollinated. The flowers were kept covered from the beginning to avoid unwanted pollens from reaching these flowers. In F2 generation, Mendel observed the appearance of both tall and dwarf plants in 3 is to 1 proportion. The breeding experiment Dealing with a single character is called monohybrid cross. For example, when one trait like height of plant was considered, it was identified as monohybrid cross. Each allele is given a symbol. In the case of height, T might represent tall and T in lower case represents dwarfness. By convention, uppercase T represents the dominant, lowercase T represents the recessive.
During monohybrid cross, Mendel found that offspring from first generation, expressed as F1 generation, always has dominant trait expressed in them, like tallness in case of height of plants and purple color in case of color of flowers. However, the next generation expressed as F2 generation consistently has a 3 is to 1 ratio of tall to dwarf. Mendel also studied the inheritance of two characters simultaneously. A breeding experiment dealing with two characters at the same time is called a dihybrid cross. Mendel considered shape as well as color of the seeds simultaneously. He crossed plants from seeds of brown shape and yellow color with those with wrinkled seed and green color. It was observed that in F1 generation, all seeds had the features of only one parental type, that is round shape and yellow color. He raised plants from F1 generation seeds and allowed the flowers to self-pollinate to produce seeds of F2 generation. These flowers were kept covered from the beginning. In F2 generation, Mendel observed the appearance of four types of combinations. These included two parental types and two new combinations. Parental types are round shaped and yellow color and wrinkled shape and green color. The two new combinations are round shape and green color, wrinkled shape and yellow color. The ratio of these phenotypes was 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. The breeding experiment dealing with two traits is called a dihybrid cross. For example, when two traits, shape of the seed, and color of the seed are considered, it is identified as dihybrid cross. Genotype symbols for round and yellow seed are uppercase R, lowercase r, uppercase Y and lowercase y, that is heterozygous condition. Four different gametes are possible and are produced in equal proportions. During dihybrid cross, Mendel found that offspring from first generation, expressed as F1 generation, always has dominant trait expressed in them, like yellow color and round shape. In next generation, means in F2 generation, four types of combinations were observed. Round shaped and yellow color, wrinkled shape and yellow color, round shape and green color, wrinkled shape and green color. These phenotypes appeared in the ratio of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. Outcomes of monohybrid and dihybrid crosses done by Mendel. In a monohybrid cross, only one of the two contrasting traits appeared in F1 generation. However, in F2 generation, both the parental traits appeared in certain proportion. In dihybrid cross, 
when two contrasting pairs of traits were checked simultaneously, only one parental combination appeared in F1 generation. However, in F2 generation, raised by self-pollination, four combinations of traits appeared. These included two parental types and two new combinations. On the basis of outcomes of monohybrid and dihybrid crosses, Mendel coined several other terms and formulated certain laws. Before understanding these laws, let us understand how transfer of traits is controlled from one generation to another. There is a pair of factors controlling each character in pea plant, one inherited from each parent. Mendel considered these factors as a carrier of hereditary information from one generation to another. At the time of reproduction, when gametes are formed, these factors segregate so that each gamete receives only one factor of each character. This is called law of segregation. The law states that during the production of gametes, the two copies of each hereditary factor segregate so that offspring acquire one factor from each parent. Fertilization brings these two factors again together in the offspring. He crossed two heterozygous pea plants, which means that each plant had two different alleles at a particular genetic position. He discovered that the traits in the offspring of his crosses did not always match the traits in the parental plants. This meant that the pair of alleles encoding the traits in each parental plant had separated or segregated from one another during the formation of the reproductive cells. In F1 generation, only one character was expressed. Mendel called it as dominant character. The character which was not expressed was termed as recessive character. This phenomenon of appearance of only one of two contrasting traits in F1 generation is termed as dominance. This helps in stating the law of dominance which says in a cross between contrasting homozygous individuals only one form of the trait will appear in the F1 generation. This trait is the dominant trait. At the same time, the character which does not get expressed in F1 generation is not lost. When F1 offspring were allowed to be self-pollinated, both the parental traits were expressed in definite proportion in F2 generation. From the F2 generation of a dihybrid cross, Mendel postulated that inheritance of factors controlling a particular trait in an organism is independent of the other. Mendel's law of independent assortment states that allele pairs separate independently during the formation of gametes. For example, the dihybrid RRYY produces gametes that have one allele of each gene. Four different gametes are possible and will be produced in equal proportions. Means, shape of seed is not associated with the color of the seed.